Well, good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, I was uh, getting ready for a show that's coming up and uh, was up looking around the log pile and uh, just looking for a good piece of wood to uh, make a natural edge bowl and maybe get a core out of it. And uh, I found this maple that's been up there for a, a year or so. Not really very long, but it's been up there for about a year or so. And what I'm thinking about doing, it's about it's about 13 inches across. So I should be able to get like a 12 inch bowl and maybe one or two others out of the inside. But I'm going to try to do a uh, core on this with my McNaughton. So, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, we're fixing to get started on this and just kind of see where it goes. I know I haven't done uh, wood turning videos in a while, but I have a, a lot that's really going on. Uh, a lot of projects that are, huh, you know, that, that I'm doing. And uh, well, now it's, it's back to wood turning, which I've actually been doing a good bit of anyway, but I just haven't been videoing much of it. No, not really doing anything very interesting. So, uh, but anyway, we'll uh, we'll get started on this. Uh, maybe you'll enjoy it. There we go. All right. Now we'll take this over to the bandsaw and just cut that circle. <coughs> I put it on the heavier end because I can still use a lot of this wood here. Down here, I can make some cups or uh, bottle stoppers or something like that out of it. Oh yeah, that's going to be pretty. Okay, so all I'm going to try to do is just make this a little bit flatter. So we'll just see how that goes. Alright, now, good to go. Drive a couple of these screws. I use an inch and a inch and a quarter screws. All right. Well, let's get this thing screwed down and we'll be in good shape. And I'll be back once we get it on the way. Make sure it's slowed down. Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, I think that's pretty good. Now I'm just hitting the high spots. I'm just hitting this side right here is high so that as you come into it it won't it wants to push your tool as you come in right here you're cutting air well you're not even cutting air but but as as it slides around it pushes out right here but as we progress on you'll just see more and more of that go away so But when it starts bouncing, be very careful not to let the tool just sit there and go real bad because you'll end up cutting in places you don't want to cut and taking more wood than what you need. That's why I just kind of take it easy. I just take it easy and... And 
then pretty soon you'll make a cut that's just smooth. There, out two and a quarter, and we'll. Uh... All right. Shavings, very sharp tool. Coming out of the cut, nice and easy. Okay, good. I'm just gonna kind of true up this tenon a little bit. And so I'm just going to use this smaller Carter and Sun gouge. this tenon if you're coring you want this tenon to be you know about a third of the diameter of your bowl or more so I think that's pretty good that's four and a half the bowl started out at 12 so that's pretty good All right. well I got my number three jaws swapped out for a larger tenon 
So let's, uh, let's get this thing up here. It's about an inch. Once I go in, it should just follow this curve, hopefully. All right, so we're going to start right there. I'm just going to mark that side. All right, that's where I want to start. Okay, uh, sorry, I actually got started, then I realized you couldn't see, so uh, anyway, but I've got my short radius, my smallest radius tool, it's going to be kind of a small bowl, but it's set an inch away, and it should cut down, uh, leave me about an inch and a quarter in the bottom, about a, a one inch in the bottom, and cut out this core here, so I've got it pointed, the handle's pointed toward my Cindy Drozda inspired uh, spindle gouge and I'm entering at the right spot so so we should be good to go and I'm turning about 550 RPMs so we'll see how this goes I've never done a natural edge before I've never cored natural edge but we're going to see how it does It's scary too. All right, the tool has to be up in the capture thing right there. And then you just start. Just start moving it forward. Very, very aggressive. You just have to go slow. You don't let it pull too hard. end up like that. Oh, and I tore all my bark off, so this one's, that's not going to work. But you see where I, I got my catch right here. And it, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> that joker, it stopped, it stopped the, uh, the chuck. I mean, it, it stopped the spindle completely and that belt kept going. <laughs> that motor's awesome. But I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to, you know, see see what I can do. Yeah, just to give you kind of an idea of how rough this tool is from the factory. I've run a file across here a couple of times and you can see just how rough that finish is on there. Now, these these are the surfaces that are rubbing against your turret right there in the front right there and up against this sharp corner right here right that sharp corner right there <clears throat> and all of these edges hang up all these edges are hanging up when they get in there and you can't move this tool smoothly through the through the uh, turret so I'm filing them down I'm filing all of this stuff out making that nice and slick and hopefully that'll fix my problem but uh, this tool's been a problem ever since I bought it and uh, and now I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to actually fix it this time I was I had sanded all of this with sandpaper you know just hand sanded it and knocked off some of that sheen but now I'm just going to go back and file every bit of it off it's awful 
I mean it's awful. Now, I've already done these two. I just finished doing these two and you can see how smooth it is. It's ready to go. I hope. But I've already done those two. I'm going to finish this one and I've still got the straight blade to do. You can you can see where I've sanded it before. Uh, but I've never touched it with a file. But if you run a file down through there, you start seeing just how deep it really is. Uh, and it's on every every blade I've got, and every uh, every edge. It's like it's like they cut it out of a piece of sheet steel or something instead of. Uh, you know, maybe with a plasma cutter on a CNC or something like that, but they never came back and cleaned up the cut. You know, plasma cutters actually leave those marks just like that. That's what makes me think it's a it's a plasma cutter. And uh, but you have to you have to get those marks off in order to have a good steel bar. But nobody ever touched it. They just painted right over it and sent it on. You know, $400 tool. It's crazy. All right, well, I'm going to finish these up. And uh, and then I'm going to get back on, on this bowl that I've destroyed. Which is, I'm sure it's just as much my fault as it is the tool. You know, you don't really need to blame your tool if you're... You know for your work but uh, but sometimes the tool does contribute you know so this was my fault but it's also my fault for using crappy tools so I'm fixing that right now and hopefully we'll we'll see a difference in the way it cuts how it goes the tool is really really sharp so we're going to Get in here and see what happens. Lock it up. Make sure it's locked up here. And just move it in. Okay, so that de it definitely helped <clears throat> uh, smoothing all this off. It definitely it definitely made pushing this thing through there a whole lot easier. That and I put the spear point back on it. I had grinded the spear spear point off because I heard that that makes things go a little bit easier. But it was just catching way too much. Uh, yeah, I think now uh, I do some work with this thing and uh, and get really used to it. I think I'll be in pretty good shape. All right, that ought to have it fixed up. 
Okay, just fix to start working on the inside. So let's get it going. I'm trying to look down this ghost image right here. Right here on the... I can kind of see the wood there. I've got one side that's a little bit higher than the other. You've got to be very careful there. really light cuts. It's creating a step getting off of that edge. Make one more swipe. and you gotta make sure that you don't push. Alright, now I'm gonna do a shear scrape. Trying to remove any tool marks. See what we got. Because actually, I'd rather not have to come back to that area. All right, that's that's good. That's ready to sand. Okay. All right. So now we just move on. Same way. Clogging up my dust collector. Very careful right here. I'm on the bar or on the edge of the of the natural edge. Scrape up through here. Especially right where my step was. Little savings. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Yep. No tool marks where the where the step was. You're gonna finish hollowing out the bolt.
Now what I'll do with the rest of this meat right here is I'll just, I'll use it to uh, blend my curve. there and that's another reason you want you can't go back and shake these wings anymore okay all right so now I'm gonna go to my newest tool I've never even used this tool before just my Robert Sorby scraper all right so let me see I need to raise this up just a touch I bought this scraper at Woodcraft just the other day and uh, I put a negative rake on it. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a negative rake on this so that really <laughs> that really helps that really really helps all right let's we'll see how it scrapes yep i think i'm good Man, that's going to be a pretty bowl, I think. 
with this sand and sealer cure and then I'll come back and try to sand that out. Well, all right. All right, there it is. Uh, a nice, about 11 and a half inch uh, natural edge, or I'm, I'll say live edge. It doesn't have bark on it. So, uh, but anyway, a natural edge bowl from from maple that I cut. Uh, the tree fell. Uh, maybe six months ago and uh, I cut it all up into blank into blanks and uh, I actually did that on video sealed up all the ends and uh, and this is what I've got now it's uh, as far as turning it it was it wasn't like fresh green wood where you get the spray of water everywhere and all that it actually cut more like dry wood, uh, but I know for a fact that it's not completely dry. So what I'm going to do now is I've already got this thing. It, it's been sanded at 120. It's got sand and sealer on it. Uh, once the sand and sealer cures, I'll go ahead and and sand at 220 and uh, put sand and sealer on it again. Once that cures, I'll go 300, 400, and then I'll go uh, with some wax. I'll put wax on the outside. And then I'm just going to let it do what it wants to do. If it wants to warp, if it wants to crack, you know, that's whatever it wants to do. Uh, and then, once it's ready, I'll, turn, I'll put it back on the lathe, on a jam chuck, and turn the tenon off and finish up the bottom and the bowl will be good to go uh, I've got I got this core out of it it'll be it'll be a nice small bowl about two and a half inches tall and you know maybe seven eight inches across so anyway but that'll be another bowl that I got out of here came right out of there just like that and uh, as far as my McNaughton uh, once I once I got those edges smoothed up and all, it uh, it did really well after that. Uh, didn't have near as many catches. Uh, those things are going to catch anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter how good you are with them. Uh, they're going to catch, and you know, but just keep going. Just you know, uh, don't give up on it. It's supposed to be a, a really good tool. A very versatile tool uh, I'm just not very good with it yet but uh, the fit and finish on it was really bad when I got it, uh, it, it and I did buy it brand new but fit and finish was really bad I kind of showed you a little bit of it here um, I did have another video up of my unboxing and showing everybody everything but I took that video down uh, after about a year or two, I took that video down. But uh, it did it did well here. I had a really hard time at first because of all those little ridges on the ends, on the edges of that thing. And uh, <clears throat> and but once I got it where I could actually control the tool, what was happening? The tool would it was hitting those little ridges and it was like almost sticking. Just like on your on your uh, tool rest, when you're coming across and you've got a little uh, divot or something in your tool rest, and your tool wants to kind of stop right there and move on, well, that's doing the same thing, but it's doing it like every millimeter, and uh, it don't want to go forward. And then when it does, boom, it's in there, and and you've got a catch. Uh, but now I've got it smoothed off. It goes through there nice and smooth now. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, I didn't complete this project because it's not dry yet. But uh, but anyway, that that's that's kind of what I do when I do turn you know greenwood. Is uh, I'll I'll pretty much let them warp and crack and stuff however they want. And I'll usually come back and uh, 
and I'll, you know, repair the cracks or, or things on some of them. I'm not going to do it on this one unless it gets really bad and they really open up. But, uh, all right. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed it, and we'll see y'all down the road.